Hello, everybody. Again, my name is Amnul Latif Bejegni. This is a continuation for the electric circuit concept course online, lecture two, number two. So we were talking about the, uh, how to determine the resistance of a wire. If we have the formula of the resistance R equals to rho, which is the resistivity of the material times the length of the material divided by the cross-section area of the material. Here we have the uh, practice problem 2.1. We are asking to determine the resistance of an iron wire having a diameter of two millimeters and the length of 30 millimeters. And then practice uh, problem 2.2. As you see here, the shape of the uh, cross-section area where the, where the current is passing through is rectangular. So we are actually given the resistance of this length here, which is uh, uh, actually we are asking to find the length of the wire with the cross-section area, a shape of a triangle. Uh, the other thing we are given is the resistivity, which is the one that we get it from the uh, table. Yeah, here is the table for the iron. The resistivity rho is 9.7 multiplied by 10 to the minus eight. The units, it's the uh, ohm meter okay, at the uh, temperature 20 Celsius. For the, uh, the lead, which is the second one, we have the rho is 2.2 multiplied by 10 to the minus seven. Now to solve this problem, we have to gather the information that we are given. So we are given the diameter two millimeters. We are multiplied by 10 to the minus three to convert it into uh, meters. And we have the length 30 meters. So the cross section area is pi over four times the square of the diameter. So if we plug this value, we will get A is equal pi 10 to the minus six, because the two would be squared become four or will cancel out with the four. Again, rho is from the table. It's 9.7 to the minus eight. Now, if we plug in the formula, rho L over A, rho is 9.7 to the minus eight, multiply by 30, divide by pi, 10 to the minus six, which is the cross-section area we determined earlier. Now, the answer I get actually, I got, it's different than the book. I repeated this many times, so I believe this is the correct answer. Uh, it's uh, 0 0.9263 ohms. The, uh, the practical problem 2.2, uh, we are given R, which is the resistance of the, the lead uh, piece of iron, of uh, wire. Uh, 1.25 10 to the minus three ohms. We have the base of the triangle is six million, yeah, millimeter. We have to multiply by 10 to the minus three. And also we have the height of the triangle four multiply by 10 to the minus three to convert it to meters. We have the row, uh, it's 2.2 10 to the minus seven. That's from the table and we apply the, uh, area for the triangle, one times the base times the half. And if we plug these uh, values, we get R, we get the area is 12, 10 to the minus six. Because we multiply 10 to the minus three, 10 to the minus three, we get 10 to the minus six, and six times four is 24. Then we divide it by two. Okay, so now we go and we plug uh, for the formula R is equal rho L times A, since we need uh, to find the L, so we could do the cross multiply, and then we divide by rho, 
So R times A over rho will give us the length L. Plug the values, we end up having these results, which is matching the answer in the book. Okay, now we start uh, studying Ohm's law. As we know, Ohm's law is the first law in electricity. And this Ohm's law is very, very important. Usually I tell my students, this Ohm's law will go with you whenever you go. Even if you go to uh, the uh, higher education to gain your PhD, you are going to use Ohm's law. So the current through the resistance is directly related to the amount of the electrical pressure or voltage applied to the circuit. So this is the definition of the Ohm's law. It's a relationship between the voltage and the current. Now, in order to get a current, we have to have a voltage supply or pressure, electrical pressure. And in order to have to, to, to have an eye, we must have a certain of a load connected to the voltage supply. We don't want to connect the two leads of the uh, power supply to each other. This will create something called a short circuit. A short circuit where the resistance practically or theoretically it's a zero, very, very small value. So the current will be very high. That current, if we allow this current to flow through the, uh, the power supply is going to damage the power supply because current is going to produce heat and heat is going to melt the insulation and uh, heat uh, the, the equipment inside the power supply. Even if the power supply is a battery and the material in the battery will be overheated and it might catch fire and be exploded. So Ohm's law is named for a German scientist, George Simmons Ohm. It is the basis for many other formulas and elliptical relationship. Ohm's law states that the current measured in amperes, I, in a circuit is equal to the voltage V or E, as we will see that sometimes some books they use the symbol V for the voltage supply and the units and or they use the letter E for the voltage supply, divided by the resistance R. So Ohm's law is expressed in three formula below. So V is equal I times R, or again, we could use E equal to I times R. Applied voltage is equal to current multiplied by the resistance. So what is the voltage is equal I multiplied by the resistance. So the voltage across that particular R is equal to the I that flow through that resistance multiplied by the value of the resistance R. From that formula, we could find I. If we are given the voltage across the resistance R, we'll be able to find I. So current is equal to applied voltage, applied voltage to the resistance divided by the resistance. Also from this formula, we can determine the resistance R. So if we divide the uh, both sides of this equation, this formula by I, we'll determine R. So R will be V over I as it shows here. Resistance is equal to the applied voltage divided by the current, where I is the current, which is the flow of electrons measured in ampere. Voltage V is the voltage or electrical pressure measured in a volt. R resistance, which is the opposition to the current measured in ohms. Here is a, a memory device that might help you to uh, figure out what is E, what is I, what's R. They are commonly used to assist you in learning Ohm's law. 
simply cover the unknown quantity uh, with uh, your finger or your hand and the remaining letters will show the uh, solving equation. So what this means here, so we assume that this line here is like a division, the horizontal line is like a, a division symbol and the vertical line is like the multiplication uh, or the X multiplication sign. So if we want to find E, so we cover E by our fingers or hand, and then E equal I times R. Now, if you wanna find I, I do the same thing. I cover I, and then I will be equal to V over R. So I see this line here, represents a division. Same thing if I need to find R, I cover R, so R is my quantity or unknown quantity that I want to find as well as I or E. So again, if I cover uh, the resistance R, then the answer will be R equals to V over I. Okay, short, uh, short circuit and open circuit. As you see here, the uh, short circuit and open circuit So because the value of R can range from zero to infinity, it is important that we consider the two extreme possible value of R. An element with R equals zero is called a short circuit, as shown in figure 2.7a. So th this, is, this is the one we can see here. So this is, let's say, this is the voltage supply with the source. And these are the two terminals of the voltage supply. So if we connect this positive terminal to the negative terminal uh, with the wire, so the wire theoretically it has a zero resistance. So even if we apply, so the voltage here, it's I according to Ohm's law, it's I times R. And since R is zero, so that means the voltage between these two points here, it's zero. In fact, the source, the voltage of the source is not zero. The zero is here, it's outside. So that one actually creates a very high uh, current flow. So if we apply the Ohm's law to find I, so we know I equals to V over R, so V divide by R and R is zero. So whatever the value of the voltage is divide by zero, the answer usually is infinity. Now we know in real life application, there's no such things called infinity, but there's a high value. So that's why like in, you know, in the real application, when you have a power source connected to a load, you must have a breaker like in our homes or you must have a fuse. So if certain current exceeding, if the current exceeding a certain design value, they say that I have a load, they say it's a pump, and that pump is drawing 15 amps. For some reason, the two terminals of the power supply are getting shorted, you know, loose wire, you know, usually this is called the ground wire or the negative wire, and this is the hot wire. So for, for some reason that if the, uh, the positive wire getting loose, the screws of the pump getting loose and touching the negative wire, that's called the short circuit. So very high current, which is exceeding the 15, is going to pass. And if we let this current to flow for a long time, it's going to burn the pump and damage it. And also it's going to damage the power supply. So what we do here to protect the load, we need to connect in series between this point and this point, we need to put either a fuse or put a breaker, okay? Like uh, uh, they call the circuit breaker. That breaker, when the current exceeding a certain limit of the current, let's say 15 amps, then that breaker will open and will disconnect the power supply 
to the uh, to the load, and this causing the interruption to the current eye. So this is a uh, uh, this is a feature a safety feature for the for the load and for the uh, uh, for the personnel. Okay, so showing that the voltage is zero, but the current could be anything uh, anything practical. A short circuit is usually a connecting wire, assumed to be to be uh, to be perfect conductor thus. Okay, so in practice, a short circuit is usually a connecting wire assumed to be a perfect conductor. Thus, a short circuit is a circuit element with the resistance approaching zero. Similarly, an element with R equal infinity or very high value is known as an open circuit, as shown in figure 2.7b for an open circuit uh, uh, for an open circuit, we have I equal V over R. And because R is infinity, and again, infinity uh, could be the uh, like a million, like when you divide like 20 over a million. So I, you know, theoretically is almost close to zero. So again, the, the, uh, the symbol infinity, it means very, very high. Now, open circuit could be the resistance could be a resistance connected between the plus and the minus of the power supply. And that resistance could be very, very high, like 100 million or 200 million, or it depends on the amount of the voltage applied. If you have like one volt, maybe 1K, you know, it's a high volt, it's a high uh, resistance, it's infinity. If that voltage is 100, maybe 1 million, it's a high. So the open circuit, it could be physically, there is no element connected between the plus and the minus, or could be an element connected between the plus and the minus, but it has a high value of a resistance. So that's indicating that the current is zero through the voltage could be anything. An open uh, circuit is a circuit element with a resistance approaching infinity. Let's take an example here. This is a good example to show how we apply Ohm's law. So we have the battery here is the uh, supply here, 12 volt battery. This is the wire that connecting the lamp, the lamp here. And this is, uh, this is the positive goes to this point and then the negative terminal goes to the other point. So now we have a complete electrical circuit. So the current is going to flow. So we need to find how much current is going to flow through the lamp if we have a 12 volt battery applied to the lamp and we have the uh, resistance. Uh, uh, we have the resistance of the lamp is equal to 4 ohms. So again, very straightforward. We have Ohm's law is equal V V equal I times R, looking for the I, so I equal V over R or E over R, plug for 12 over three is equal three ampere. So we're expecting to have a three ampere current to flow. Now, if we want to protect the lamp or the power supply from a short circuit that we mentioned for some reason that this wire getting close and touches that wire, so then the current will flow from this point, you know, flow directly through the wire. It's going, it's going to escape or bypass the load because the load here is trying to limit the current to t three amps. Now, if if somehow, as I said, this point connected this point directly, then we have a very high current, which is will be 12 divided by zero. Again, 12 divided by zero is infinity mathematically, practically it's very high, it's over, uh, over, over three amps. Again, if we let this current to flow through the, to the battery is going to damage the battery. So what we do, we can bring, uh, put uh, uh, probably a, a breaker or a fuse. That fuse is going to burn 
or disconnect the wire if the current exceeding three amps. Maybe we put a fuse size of four amps because we don't want to put a fuse of three amps because as soon as you know, if a three amp passed through the fuse and the fuse was designed to burn out or to disconnect the current uh, in three amps, then immediately the fuse will burn out. So the best uh, design will be putting a fuse of four amps. This is example two. We are given the voltage 24. We given I3. We need to find what is the resistance value. What is the value of this resistance here? So again, using Ohm's law, so R equal V or E only divided by I, 24 over three, then R will be Ohm. So it's very important to write the units, you know, whatever you calculate, whatever value or the quantity you calculate, you need to write down the, the, the units. Again, it's very important to, to know the units of the resistance, the units of the current, and the units of the voltage, because sometimes the, uh, and the symbol also, you know. For example, uh, we are not saying this is uh, a voltage supply. We just say E or V equal 24 volt. So knowing the units will determine what is the quantity that we are given. What is it? Is it a voltage? Is it a current? Is it uh, ampere or current or its uh, resistance? Again, here I equal three. So even with that, if, if I don't give you I and give you three A, you must know that this is I because the unit is A ampere. Okay? And as we said, one ampere is equivalent to 6.24 multiplied by 10 to the power 18 electron per second passing in the wire. So here, three amps. Now, if we measure how many electrons is going to pass through this wire, that will be three times 6.24 multiplied by 10 to the power 18 electrons per second. Okay, more example here, we have, um, electrical iron, draw two amps at 120 volt, find the resistance. So again, knowing the units, you know easily what are these quantities. So we are given current I equal two amps, and we're given the voltage 120. So we need to find the resistance. So again, using Ohm's law, it will be easy to determine what is the resistance of that iron, electrical iron. So V is 120 over two, so that iron has 60 ohm resistance. Now, looking to the practice problem, 2.3, the uh, essential, essential component of a toaster is an electrical element, a resistance that converts electrical energy to heat. So we know that the toaster that we use to uh, heat up our bread or, uh, or bagels, that toaster basically is converting the electrical energy into uh, a, a heat. So how much current is drawing by a toaster with the resistance of 12 ohm at 120 volt? So we have the power supply connected to the toaster is 120. So that means there is 120, 110 volt apply to the toaster and the, the toaster has 12 ohms so we need to find how much current will flow in that toaster so basically again ohm's law v equal i times r so then i equal v over r so basically we divide 110 over the 12. again for the example showing here we have the what we are given here, we are, if you look to the circuit, we are given the voltage, we are given the resistance. Now, as you see here, with the units are five K kilo ohms. So you have to pay attention to the units, either the basic unit or a higher unit like kilo ohms or mega ohms or, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, or uh, milliohms and so on. So uh, again, I is equal uh, voltage over resistance. So if we if we divide by you know 30 ohm, 30 ohms 30 volt over 5k, that will be our uh, uh, you know our our current. So again, here if we just uh, divided 30 over 5, that will be 6 milliamps. But if we include the 10 to the power 3, which is the K, then this will be 0 .0, uh, 0 0.006 ampere. Here I'm using my whiteboard to show you how to solve the practice problem 2.3. So as you see here, we have, we're given R is equal 12 ohm and V is equal 110, we need to find I. So if we use the uh, Ohm's law is equal I times R. Now we're looking for I, so we divide, you know, both sides by R. So R will cancel out. So we have I equal V over R and we're given V is 110 and R is 12, so the value for I will be uh, uh, 110 over uh, 12. So I is equal V over R, 110 over 12, which is equal 9.167. Here's some common electrical prefix. We have the, uh, the basic unit is one, which is 10 to the to the power zero. And then if we go higher, then we have the kilo, so which is K, symbol K, and then we have mega, the prefix, and the symbol M, and this is a million. And this is the power of 10, okay? The reason that we use this prefix because it's easy to write down. So instead of writing, you know, one comma three zero, only write down 10 to the power three, and then so same thing for 10 to the power 6, 10 to the power 9, 10 to the power 12. Now, if the units are smaller than 1, then which is a milli, which is 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the minus 6, 10 to the minus 9, 10 to the minus 12. So every time we go lower, we add negative 3. So negative 3 plus negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus negative uh, 3 is negative 9 negative nine plus negative three is negative 12. And this uh, 10 to the minus uh, to the power negative 12, it's a pico uh, or p. This is a nano or m. This is a micro or mu. This is a milli or actually this one has to be a lower case. Okay. So I have to change this one to a lower case. For m uppercase is for mega. 10 to the power 6. 10 to the minus 3 is lower case m. Okay, and this is tera, giga, mega, kilo. Basically, it is 1. So if we have 1 ohm, or we might have 10 to the minus 3 ohms, or 10 to the power 3 uh, ohms, which is uh, kilo ohms. Okay, so let's use the prefix and the, the power of 10 to write down the, uh, this example here. As we see here, we have 14,000 volt with a power of 10. So uh, let's say I want to write down the, uh, this number to the power of 10. So what I do, I need to count how many zeros we have. And then we power those zero to the power 10. So here we have one, Two, three, zero. So it would be 14 times 10 and you put three, which is the count of number of zeros. 250,000, same thing, we count one, two, three, four, zero. So 10 to the power four. 25 multiplied by 10. Minus. So these are equivalent. Same thing here, we count one, two, three, four, five is a five zero. So 10 to the power five. So 26 to the power, uh, 10 to the power five. Now for the lower than, than one, which is a fraction, same thing, we count the how many digits we have, okay? To the left 
of the uh, of the point of the decimal. So we count one, two, three. So not so we count not just the zeros, the zeros and the digits and the numbers. And then we take this number here and multiply by how many digits? One, two, three. And because it's less than one, so we have to multiply by 10 to the minus three. Now here, this number here, when we convert it to power of 10, we count the digits. How many digits we have? We have one, two, three, four. So 10 to the minus four. So we take the number here and multiply by 10 to the minus four. Same thing here, we count one, two, three, four, five. And again, because it's less than one, so we multiply by 10 to the minus five, the number of the digits, not just the number of the zeros. Okay, here's the practice problem. Write down this number. Okay, this is watts, which is the, and this number, and this number into the, uh, uh, so let me, uh, So to write this number here, 15 million, we count again how many zeros we have. We have six zeros, so it would be 15, 10 to the power six. It's not minus six because this is larger than one. Now this one, we count three, six, nine, 12. So it would be one multiplied by 10 to the power. How many zeros we have again? It's 12 zeros. Now, if we have one, so if we take just, it will be 10 to the power 12. Okay. Same thing here. This is a lower than uh, zero, then lower than one. So we have to count the digits left to the left side of the decimal. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it will be eight multiplied by 10 to the power uh, six, minus six, because it's less than one. Again here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it'll be nine times 10 to the minus eight. This is one, two, so it'll be, uh, would be 10 to the minus two. One, two, three, actually I'm missing the point here. So it would be zero, zero, three. And this would be, uh, so this one, two, three, so we have three, uh, 10 to the power negative three. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five. So it'll be four, 10 to the power uh, uh, minus five. This is three, 10 to the minus three. This is one to the minus two. Okay, so let me, uh, I wanna just, Okay, and guys, here's the answer for this uh, practice problem as, as, as I explained earlier. So 15 to the power six, 10 to the power six. This is one to the power 12, eight to the power negative six, nine to the power negative eight, because we have eight digits. And this is, we have two digits, three digits to the left of the decimal, as I mentioned earlier. And this is five dishes, four to the power negative five. Okay, now moving to the type of uh, resistors. Are you, we know our resistors are used to develop desirable voltage drops and limit the current value in electronic circuit. Sometimes we have a voltage supply larger than the load voltage. We have a load, let's say we have a light bulb, require five volt, but my battery, it has 10 volt. So if I connect the five volt load to 10 volt battery, there will be an excess of the current. The current will be very high and because we are applying more voltage than what we need, than the load needs. So in this situation is going to damage the, uh, the load. 
So what do we do in this case if I don't have a five volt power supply? What should I do? In this case, I will connect a resistance or a resistor in series with the uh, load, with the light bulb, for example, in this case. So that resistance, it will absorb or consume five volt from the power supply and the other five, which coming from the, other, uh, from the power supply, will be applied or reaching my load. So in this case, I will have some develop, uh, de desired voltage, the voltage drop, they call the voltage drop, because this is, will be useless voltage. It will be kind of a waste, but I have to. If I don't waste this extra voltage exceeding the five volt that I require, then my load will be damaged. So the trade aim is to protect, in order to protect my load, I have to develop a desired voltage drop. And in this situation, I will limit the current value that will be going through my load. So resistor values can be purchased in range of value from less than one ohm, could have like 0.05. Uh, ohms to over 22 million uh, uh, ohms. Resistors are grouped by ohms and uh, what size means the ability of the resistor to safely, safely dissipate heat. So what is the meaning of that? So when you buy a resistance, it's not enough to ask the vendor or the seller to the value said, okay, I need 1000 ohms. This is not enough because you might have maybe hundred of those hundred ohms resistors in the shelf, on the shelf. So there is a hundred ohm resistor that can withstand 0.25 Watts. The same or another 100 ohm resistor can withstand a thousand watts or can withstand 25 watts or three watts or half watts and so on. So when you design a resistor, you must know how much this resistor or what is the ability of the resistance to dissipate the heat without getting damaged. So when you size the resistor, you size with two things or two quantities, the ohm or two values, the ohm value and the watt size, how much energy that resistance can withstand without getting damaged or getting, getting uh, uh, burned out. Common uh, watch size range, we have quarter watt to 25 watts or 1000 watts. When purchasing a resistance, the desired resistance and watt rating must be specified as I mentioned earlier. For example, a thousand ohm and watt size, quarter watt, one half watt or two watts and so on. There is uh, the previous uh, resistors. Uh, this one they call the fixed resistance, the fixed value, okay? So this is made of a carbon composition resistor and it is a fixed value. Now there is sometimes you might need a variable resistance to control the amount of the current flowing in, this, in, in, in the circuit. So you don't want to switch the values while they are connected to the circuit. You need some, some type of adjustable resistance that will control the amount of the current flow to your room. So sometimes, for example, you need to control the speed of the motor, for example, or the speed of the fan. So in order to do that, you need to control the amount of the current passing through that fan or that, uh, that motor. So in this case, you need adjustable resistance. So if you apply more resistance to the load or, or, or to the supply, then less current will flow. So always the resistance will be connected with the load in series. And we'll talk about the type of the connection in the coming chapters. Uh, 
there is another type which is very similar to the adjustable uh, resistance. So this is the adjustable resistance here. It's a little bit large. This is for high power. And there's a slide here. So by moving the slide back and forth, you will be able to adjust the value of the resistance that will lead to controlling the amount of the current flow through the load, as I mentioned. There is uh, the other type, which is for uh, a lower uh, current, which is, will be more practical for the electronic circuit, they call the potentiometers. Those potentiometers are very common type of variable resistance found in electronic projects. They uh, vary the resistance value as it turns. So there is, here's the, the knob here. If you turn that knob, you will adjust the value of the resistance from zero to the maximum of that value of those resistance. Now, again, practically, it's very difficult to uh, write down the value of on the body of that resistance. The body is so small, it's hard to read. So they come up with a color code. They call the resistor color code. So they, they have color codes. I'll explain this later. That color code will, uh, uh, will uh, um, the color code will determine. So, will color code is an easy way to know the value of the resistance. Resistors commonly have three or four, and sometimes five bands. Band means colors. The first band or the first color represents the first digit of the resistance value. The second band resist, uh, represents the second digits of the resistance value. The third band is called the multiplier that gives the factor of 10 that the two digits should be multiplied by. I explain that later on. The fourth band represents the tolerance of the resistance the, uh, or the, the error. The resistance tolerance with the error is a reflection of the precision of the resistance value. How what is the precision value of that resistance? Is there any variation in the, when you measure the resistance, did you find exactly the same value as you expect? For example, if you, uh, if a 20 ohm resistor has a 10% tolerance, the resistance value can be varied by two. So you take 20, multiply by 10, divide by 100, they give you two. So, the range of the value that you might expect, it would be from 22 to 18. So you add or you subtract the tolerance with the tolerance value, which is two minus 20 or two plus 20. So 20 plus two is 22 or 20 minus two is 18. So the range, the expectation, the expected value of the resistance could be from 18 ohms to 22 ohms. This means if you buy a resistance of 20 ohm value and it has a 10% error or tolerance, then when you measure the resistance, if you measure it by the meter, you are not expected 100% to measure it's 20. They tell you it's 20, but there's an error because of the manufacturers, because the quality of the material, the resistance are made off. So in this situation, you expect you could measure the resistance 22 or 21 or 21.1 or 21.5 or 18 or 18.5 uh, or 19. So you expect your value you might buy a box of maybe 100 pieces of 20 ohms and you measure one, uh, every single one, you're not expecting to have all of them with the same value. One of them could be 20, one of them could be 21, the other one could be 22, the other one could be, you know, 21.9 and so on. So this is the meaning of the, uh, the tolerance. Note, if there is no fourth band, consider the tolerance 20. So if you buy a resistance that doesn't have only have three colors, so the fourth one will be represents as the blank or no no band, and that no band means it has 
percent uh, error. Okay, so now if you hold the resistance like this here, and usually you have a space, you know, like you have the, uh, this is the color, this is the bands here, color code, red, you know, blue, green, and gray. So usually the way you hold it, usually there is a gold band and a silver band. So if you have a gold band or a silver band, you keep them on the right side, okay? You keep this on the right side. And then read from left to right. So this one will be like the red, for example, here we go to this uh, digit, red is two, okay? So write down number two. And then we go to the next one, this will be the second digit, which is the blue. So blue is six, so we have 26. And then the green is the multiplier. So we have 26 now, so we write down two. And next on the right, it will be six, so it will be 26. And then go to the green. So the green, it has 100,000. So we multiply the 26 by 100,000. And then we look to this band, the fourth one. The fourth one, if it's a silver, then it will be plus or minus 10%. If it's a gold, it will be plus or minus 5%. If there is no band, that means it's plus or minus uh, 20%. Now, here's some example. We given the color code as shown. Find the value of each resistor. So we given red, brown, blue, silver. So we need to know what is the value of the resistor. So looking to the, um, looking back to the table here, okay, to the color code, and go to back here to the uh, color code. We have red, brown, blue. We go to the red, brown, brown, blue. Here is red is two, brown is one, so it will be 21, and the blue will be 1 million. Okay, so it will be 21 times 1 million. This is would be our, you know, multiplier. So multiply 21 times a million, which is six zero. And then the, the, uh, the tolerance band is a silver. Silver is plus or minus 10%. Okay, here we go. We have the same thing, red, brown, blue, silver. So I'm just repeating this, uh, this question. Now we have violet, gray, black, gold. So again, we go to the uh, table, so violet is seven, gray is eight, seven, eight, okay. Now the black is the multiplier, so always the first digit, second digit, the third one is the multiplier. We have to multiply these two digits by the color code of this one. The color code of the black is for the multiply is one, here's one. So multiply that by one. Okay, and then since it's uh, gold, so gold is plus or minus 5%. Okay, here's an exercise, write the color code for the following. So we have the numbers here. We have, so first one, second one are the first digit and second digit. So it will be red, yellow. And then the last two here is the multiplier. So the multiplier is two zero, it's a red, okay? So we have two four, so two, first digit, two, second digit, four. So four is yellow, so we have red, yellow, and then the multiplier have two zero, it's a red. So it will be red, yellow, brown, uh, red. Okay. 
Okay. Red, yellow, red, and plus or minus, it's silver. So plus or minus, it's a silver. Okay, so it's easy, just follow the rules here. Now we have nine, one, so we go to first digit, nine is white, one is brown, again, white, brown, and then we have three zeros, so three zero will be the hour multiplier, three zero is orange, so we write down the orange. And since it's a plus or minus 20, so there is no color code, there's no band. It's a black. Okay, so I will stop here. This is the end of lecture two and thank you for watching and see you in next lecture.